June the 8th. It's hot. The forecast, gosh, for the next two weeks, 100 to 105. But we're gonna do some harvesting of some herbs. Uh, and I'm gonna show you what we do with our herbs, uh, pestos, different things like that. So, hey, let's turn the camera on some herbs. Let's harvest some and let's get to work. Hey guys, we've got lots of basil. Love the basil. Uh, it's just, we plant next to tomatoes. It's a companion plant and they taste good together too. And that's something else I'm gonna go over as well too. Uh, there are some plants that grow really good together and then some not so well. So there's a companion planting chart. I can probably put a link to that here in the comments, but tomato, basil, they taste good together and they're companion plants. So I'm gonna harvest this. You can start to see that they're going to flower and you could continue to harvest this. Uh, this is an annual, okay? So you have to plant it every year. It's gonna die off in the winter. And that, don't throw the flower away. That's got a lot of aroma. So I'm just gonna harvest this, pretty much just cut it in half. And we'll do that with the rest of them. So here, I'll bring in close. Basically just gonna cut it pretty much in half. And it'll continue to come back. That's the nice thing about it. It'd be nice if we, didn't have temperatures at 100 <laughs> and we had some rain but hey that's how we we deal with things here i don't think just kind of looking at everything that we have i don't think we're going to have a, a a good harvest for tomatoes it, it just it's just the way it is um what i'll probably do is i'll probably cut back the tomatoes in half and um we'll hope that we'll go ahead and have a second uh, crop um and that's just how we're gonna do it. We're gonna grab some of this purple basil. Um, this is a different variety. It was supposed to be purple from what the seed said, but you know the seed companies are really doing some strange things. Um, I know Danny and Wanda at Deep South Homestead had some issues with their beans. We're having issues with ours as well too, and I'll bring you over there here after I harvest this and I'll show you. Um, but we're just gonna get as much basil as we can before it they bloom and we're going to continue to harvest and i'll show you what we do here when we go into the kitchen is that cool or what so i ordered these seeds uh bush butter beans from haas um and they're growing and they're growing they're really doing good and all of a sudden they start growing these shoots it's a pole bean so i mean i'm like wait a minute here on the package it said um butter bean bush and they start running these trailers up here um so i just i know it looks silly but kind of a built a little bit of a redneck trellis i had to some pvc and bungee but um we'll see how it goes just just kind of disappointing you know when you buy seeds you know you, you really hope that you get what you're getting you know at the end of the day i don't care as long as we get the beans but this is just something you kind of have to look out for um but no we'll We'll follow the progression of these butter beans and see how they do. A bush or pole, I guess I don't care, as long as we get the beans. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and get this cilantro. It's already starting to bolt, but that's okay. It's still gonna taste really good. I'm gonna cut it down, and then it'll continue to grow from the, from the base. But we're gonna make a pesto out of this. It's really good. You get out here and do some weeding. All right, cilantro. Got some nice little banana peppers here. Might as well harvest these before they burn in the 105 degree weather. Hey guys, it's just the way it is here. You know, we like I said, our, our, our best season is fall and winter. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, we'll, we'll be harvesting in December, especially on the grow table. I'm gonna be uh, posting that grow table update here pretty soon. Some yellow pear tomatoes. The plants are really struggling. This heat is just kind of burning the foliage. I mean, you can water all you want, but it's still gonna burn the foliage. 
but we're getting about this much every day and i'm fine with that we can pop it in a salad or something that's just the, the way we have to deal with things here in the heat also going to harvest some mint too hey cat how's it going um it's our garden cat she protects the garden from critters um but no always plant your mint in pots if you plant it in the ground make sure it's a designated area because it's going to spread like like a weed like crazy all right, let's head into the kitchen and let's make some pesto. All right, we're gonna wash all these really good, any kind of bugs or dirt. And I'm gonna pick through all these and take all the leaves off. We've got the cilantro over here, nice and clean. And then we're gonna go ahead and I have a commercial salad spinner. A really cool device. You put your items in there and it spins, pushing the water outside and out. Love it. All right, now we're gonna wash the mint. Yeah, definitely want to grow your mint in a separate garden uh, or a separate pot. I mean, it'll it'll just spread like a weed. All right, almost done. This is the hardest part: is getting all the leaves off the stem. Now, you know, guys, I've been making pesto for so long. I just know what ratios to basil and to mint that I like. Uh, I don't like too much mint, just enough to kind of give it a little little kiss of that flavor. Uh, but I will put a recipe uh, to what everything we're making uh, in the comments, uh, just a basic pesto recipe. The cool thing about pesto is you really can make it out of different kind of herbs if you want. Um, it's just basically t making the herbs into a paste. Um, we, we're going to store ours uh, in the Ziplocs in the freezer. You can do ice trays as well too. All right, all right, let's put the lid on this commercial salad spinner. It's gonna get all that water out of there and let's get it dried. A really good tool to have. If you have a huge veggie garden, you got to get one of these spinners. I'll see if I can find the link and I'll put it uh, in the comments below. All right, set everything here to dry. A little air dry. Most of it's dry though. There we go. All right, guys, we've got all of our ingredients washed, dried, and ready to go. I've got everything up, set up here. I will put the recipe, I promise, in the comments. I just I don't cook with recipes. I just I know I've been doing it for so long, but I will put the recipe in there. Okay, so what we have is pecorino romano and then reggiano parmigiano. I use the good stuff. Don't don't use the cheap stuff. Um, it's worth it. Alright, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is oh I wanted to tell you guys when you get to the end of the cheese that rind, get you a little jar, put some really good extra virgin olive oil and set it in there, set it on the counter. It's gonna take on that really nice flavor. The first thing I'm gonna do is put some of that oil in there. There we go. Wipe that off. I'm gonna put that back out of the way. I keep it in this little ramekin too, so it doesn't you know, leak everywhere. And then I'll clean it often. Okay, a couple of choices here that you have. Uh, typically, the classic recipe calls for pine nuts. They are expensive. Uh, if you don't have them, then you can use walnuts. You could use any kind of nuts. Almonds, uh, cashews. Okay, I went ahead and peeled some garlic. There's nice garlic in there. Go ahead and throw the cheese. And we're gonna go ahead and start putting the greens in there. Oh, no, wait a minute, sorry. Salt, not too much because the cheese has a pretty good amount of salt. 
and I have fresh cracked pepper right here. Uh, we store these uh, in the freezer. We put them in little tiny Ziplocs, and I'll show you too when we get done. Um, hey, you know, cook a pasta. You can pull it out uh, of the freezer, let it thaw, and then take that fresh pesto uh, from your summer garden, uh, even for you guys that live up north. Um, you know, it's not gonna be like you're 100% fresh, but it is gonna lock in those fresh flavors of the herb. Anytime I use any kind of equipment with cutting blades, I don't have it plugged in until I'm ready. I've seen, as a chef in many kitchens, people really do some dumb things. We're not gonna, we're not gonna do that. Once you get it working, it will, it will incorporate. You just gotta keep pushing it down and, or you can add a little more oil and I'll go ahead and add a little more oil. I don't want it too greasy though. I want it really fresh. There we go. There we go. Just keep adding your greens, your herbage. See how it folds in there? Let me go ahead and get you a little closer. Get in there. Yeah, you don't want to put too much oil if you can avoid that. You just you don't want it to be greasy. It's amazing how much herbs you can pack in this pesto. So good. Pasta. Um, I've used it as a spread. I've made compound butters with it where you uh, get your butter to room temperature and fold in some of that pesto. Just smear that on some really good Italian bread. Look at that. How beautiful that is. I keep mixing it a little bit more because there's some leaves in there. Pretty much done. Go ahead and put these in these little sandwich bags. Make sure that you label them. Make sure you put the date as well too. I figured I'd try this little bag holder that Rochelle got me. It's kind of like an extra set of hands. That looks pretty good right there. And wipe that off. You know, there's other things that you can do. I'm going to be making, we harvested that cilantro. I'm going to be making a cilantro paste. Heck, I like to use that when you can't get cilantro in the winter. On top of enchiladas, uh, any kind of uh, southwestern or Mexican kind of dish. Uh, this way you can just pop it out of the freezer. Um, it, stir fries, think about stir fries. Cilantro is in a lot of Asian style dishes. Uh, you could pop that out of there. Uh, add your ginger, garlic. Um, do it Asian style pesto with cilantro. In fact, we might just go ahead and do that. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. I'm excited. We've got three little pouches. I call them books. We set them in the freezer, just stack them in there like that. You can pull one out, open it up, and you've got beautiful basil pesto. Um, you know, I was talking to you in the, in the garden. Um, companion planning is important. I'm gonna to try to put a chart uh, in the comments or a link. Um, certain plants grow good together. Some plants do not do good together. And the flavor profiles are coincide. So tomato, basil, carrots, dill. So I'll get that chart for y'all. Yeah, um, I'll probably do another gar a video on specific herb garden, what we grow. I'll kind of take you out there this weekend, early in the morning. It's been really hot. Um, oh, Rochelle and I wanted to say a late happy birthday to Miss Lippy. <laughs> you had us cracking up with that video, but happy birthday, Miss Lippy, and, and Buddy, too. Good job on that chicken coop. But hey, until next time, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, subscribe, share with your friends. Uh, we're having a good time. Uh, we'll see you later. Take care.